Guys, it is a gorgeous day. And today I'm fertilizing. Now our temperatures are getting into the consistent 60 de degrees. Today is 70, but we're going to have rain tomorrow, which is good. And it's a good day to fertilize when you know you're going to get rain the next day. So I'm out fertilizing everything that needs it today. And the good news is I'm starting up here. This is my PG hydrangea. And I'm just going to get that off of there anyway. Um, and the PG hydrangea. And I have Ramona, uh, a class two clematis right here. And with class two, it's like here is a bud and flowers. And so we're going to cut the dead off right there, the dead off here. Um, and the good news about having your hydrangea, this is a potted one and a clematis potted, you use rose tone on both. So today we're going to be putting rose tone. Uh, as you saw, I put rose tone on my roses, but it's also good for any woody blooming shrub or vine like this. So I'm going to give this pot a cup my hand i've said this so many times you can say that all the time it's a, it's, i've really measured it. it have you tested it i have i measured it one time oh but anyhow this is organic fertilizer by espoma and it's great and um if you put a little extra that's all right it's slow release i my hands too big with gloves on and then what i'm going to do here i'm going to shove the mulch over top of it and this is my little Ramona sign. And uh, so there we have it. The PG's been in the pot for three years now. Wonderful pot uh, plant to have in here. The blooms are beautiful. They bloom all summer, look gorgeous. I'll take that out. Okay, the next thing we're heading down and we'll keep moving. Fertilizing now is my dwarf Alberta tree. And the plant tone is good for your trees and shrubs, and it can be cast on your lawn. It's a good all-purpose fertilizer, uh, and I use it on my, my uh, and you'll see in the garden, my um, little hedge I have down there of boxwoods. I throw, I'm going to throw this over this area around my dwarf Alberta. And emptying that out in this this bed up here <laughs> the next thing i have is my clematis which is carnaby it's going to get a handful or more spread around its roots like this i love getting out here and giving everything early in the spring when you first see buds put on some gloves uh, you can see with Carnaby, there is a lot of dead, and I left my pruners up there. But I need to get in here and above, for example, this. You're going to cut that off. It's probably not the best way to do it. But anything dead above a bud, because your class two clematis bloom on old and new wood. So you wait until you see these buds so that you can see where the new wood is, where the dead wood is. And. Uh, it's really not that hard once you just make certain when you buy your clematis that you keep the tag because it'll say class one, two, or three. And or um, red, green, and yellow. Or red, green, and yellow, depending on who you buy your clematis from. Yeah. So you got to keep those tags, and then the more you do it, the easier it gets. The last thing we're doing in this bed are my peonies. And I've gone ahead, and all I do with my peonies is I, I use my own compost. So I throw compost all around where I see the new growth coming up. This soil's pretty good. And these have been in the ground forever. Your peonies, you know, that you can divide them, but it takes them a while to get established. But once they're established, they're there forever. And uh, so a little bit of compost. I that, think that's one of the first plants you put in this. It probably is, right? This area. It's yeah. probably been 20 Plus, years or The more. white one came from my mom's house. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and uh, I haven't lived at my mom's house for 50 years. But, so I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of compost all around the soil. Just with a few little weeds. When you're out here, do this. Get rid of this. This weed. Get rid of it. I'll come back and pick it up. All right. That's, that's how easy this is. 
uh, the bulbs they'll get after they're through blooming. I will throw a little, I don't know, I don't have bulb tone. Maybe I'll just throw some plant tone. Uh, bone meal's good for that. But for now, we're heading to the lower garden and we'll take care of plants down there. This is a lilac tree that I've had. It was given to me by my neck, who now is my neighbor. When it was just in a small pot, she brought it, it's a French lilac. Lilacs like to be fertilized. If you're, if this was planted out in my garden, you could probably get away with just some compost. But because I treat this bed like a large pot, because it's just got minimal soil, I don't replenish it as, I don't replenish all the soil, but I add a little compost to it. And with this, I am going to use the rose tone. It's also good for lilacs. You could use bone meal uh, on your lilacs. Uh, but I choose to use the rose tone, rose tone since it is a flowering tree. So I'm gonna give it a really good dose of my rose tone around it. And then I'm gonna top it, even on top of the mulch, with a little bit of compost. Because I want this soil to stay rich. And I want this tree to live as long as it can. You can see what my cats do though. Look at this bark. That's what the cats are doing. I love them. But it is what you live with when you live with pets. But this just covers up that mulch. Not yeah, the mulch. She uses, she uses that as access to the upper deck. I know. And then she just climbs that tree all the time. She climbs it. But that just also, you know, lays on top of that fertilizer. It's as I said, it's going to rain, and uh, this, this will bloom if the weather stays like it is. Hopefully, hopefully, we won't have any killing frosts. And so the other thing I'm going to do, this is my lovely clematis, whose name I can't remember. It's one of my favorites, but that's all right. It's beautiful. Let me step across here. I've got some. There we go. I've got some uh, tulips right here. But I'm going to go ahead and give this clematis. It's doing great. I'm behind you. Huh? Are you behind me? Yeah. <laughs> That's not the shot. No. <laughs> so we're going to give that its fertilizer. I had compost on this, so I'm going to do that. Yay. Oh, here's its sign. Oh, poet. Oh my gosh. That's a beautiful clematis. Cool. We're just moving right along. So guys, go to Boxwood Hedge, and all you do with that, take a handful, throw it in there, and then I will throw some compost on top. I think for me, what I do, why I like to do that is because the soil, it gets the sun, and uh, I've already done the back of that. And I like the compost to help uh, cover up that soil. And the fertilizer. Just keeps everything healthy. show you what I do to my hostas. Okay, so we're down here in the mains. This is the sunny border, but across from us, once the willow tree leaves out, that becomes a very shady border. And I've gone ahead off camera and uh, put compost on my hosta bed. And just mainly around the, the facing part of the bed where the sun hits before this gets shady. And uh, I'm glad I sprayed red. You could see where one of these hostas had been chewed, but I got it sprayed a couple days with liquid fence. So we're over here on the sunny border, and uh, hostas, what I have found, 
you know, they say that they like more shade than sun, but after a while, they adapt because these hosses look beautiful. Uh, they don't, they're pretty much in full sun all the time. Um, but I'm going to do the same thing here. I like to just give a nice little pour around all the edges. They're very, you know, when you have good soil, and I've been working in this garden for 32 years. Um, oh, yeah. They want some help there weekly? No, I got it. I got it. Um, they don't require a lot. Oh, wait. I didn't even know I had a peony right here. It's, it's funny what you forget you have, but here's a peony coming up, so good thing I have some compost. I'll give it some compost. I think there's a Reese cup in here. Oops, I see that. And maybe it was just a wrapper. Anyhow, I can see the little peony heads right there. Everything's got compost and it makes it look so nice. If you do this kind of stuff, you know, it doesn't take long, but you're just building the soil. You're putting good microbes back in there. So good, that's done. Put that right here. The last thing we're gonna do is right back here. I have bone meal, which is a, you want a low nitrogen fertilizer for your irises. So when you, you could use anything like, if you could find 61010, that would be good. But the bone meal is a definitely low nitrous, nitrous fertilizer. And it's good for your bulbs, it's good for uh, your irises. So I usually just spread a little bit of this around each little plant. And I had some little animal who likes it. <laughs> so give these all nitrogen. If you get too high of a nitrogen, you'll get more leaf and not the bloom. And we don't want leaves. We've got leaves already, but we want blooms. So, they look healthy right now. I love it. So that's pretty easy. I've got tulips with heads starting to pop up. So what am I gonna do the rest of my day? I'm gonna continue on. You can see there's a lot of irises throughout the bed. I'll give these a little bone meal and uh, make certain, oh, I see another clematis there that I need to give a little rose tone to. And that's it. So it's the time to get things fertilized. The um, plant tone, you can throw it on your grass. It's organic and this close to the river. The last thing I'll do today is I will use an organic fertilizer on my lawn down here because I don't want anything washing into that beautiful river. That could create a problem. I don't want any chemicals in it. So, <laughs> I'm green. So anyhow, that's it for today. Get out, get things fertilized when you start seeing those buds because it, it happens very quickly. And so thanks for watching Gardening on the West Fork, Zone 6A in Western West Virginia. We'll see you the next time.